Here we go, people. This is me, and I'm reviewing Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. I'm Tim, and I don't do a whole lot of on video stuff, but this show coming out, I watched it, and it was so good that I wrote a review on my website. Here you can see this is my review. And. I go pretty nice into the review. It's a nice review. I gave it a four out of five. Maybe a four and a half. I don't know. Maybe I want to change that. But I really did like it overall. Obviously, um, I grew up loving the original film. The original Dark Crystal is like, you know, very, very beloved movie. Not by me, but so many people. So, they had a lot to live up to. And they did a really great job. The puppet effects were great. They didn't look a whole lot different from the 82 film, really. I mean, looking online and watching the behind the scenes they had after on Netflix, they show that there were some different techniques done, slightly different techniques, but most of it was pretty much the same. Although they used, like, I remember there was one part where they showed, like, using a, a Wii remote like a wee nunchuck remote to like control the eyes and faces of a, of a puppet, that was cool. But I'm already going off the rails because this is how I do my reviews. I just kind of do them. But overall it's a really great show. Ten episodes and I didn't really feel like any of them were too filler. I mean sometimes a full season there's always one or two episodes that maybe you don't need. It's a, flash flat, a flashback episode like pretty much every new season of a show has like one backstory or like flashback episode and they didn't really do this but I mean all the characters are really good I was surprised at how much the Skeksis were involved but I guess this is just kind of how it's going to be for this season I'm assuming that maybe if there is a next season which I'm sure they're already working on it's going to be more about the mystics perhaps because there's only two mystics in the entire season, and it was all about the Skeksis and, you know, the realization by Rian that they're all actually evil. And, I don't know, it's pretty obvious they're evil. I mean, you, you, if you look at these dudes, if you look at a Skeksy, well, I got some Skeksy, yeah, I got like a, I'm looking at the Dark Crystal fandom page over here. I mean, look at these dudes, they're obviously bad. Like, in, for how many years were they following these people blindly, I guess? I guess they just figured they they hold they hold the power of the crystal, so you should just, you know, follow what they do. And, I don't know, the, the whole story about why they even got the crystal from Agra, I thought was a little weak. Like, they just give her an orary, or they give her that, they give her that, statue, not that statue, but that moving, like, cosmos thing that floats around in her place. They gave her that, and she gives him the crystal. I'm like, I don't know, I feel like the crystal, as nice as that is, you shouldn't be giving it off to anyone. But apparently it was kind of like a trick. They tricked her into, like, using that thing, and then basically she just falls into this deep sleep for you forever and ever and ever. And while she's sleeping, searching the cosmos or whatever, you know, the Skex user are making the dark crystal the crystal worse. Like, it's, it's, it's not really dark at first. I think that's kind of the point. At first, it was just kind of crystal, but then they just kept using it, and it became the dark crystal. But the puppetry was great. The voice acting was great. I mean, I mean no one, generally, overall, the voice acting was good. I mean... It didn't matter to me that anyone had British accents, because, I mean, in the original movie, I think most people were had American type accents. I don't think Anya Taylor-Joy is, is British. I'm pretty sure she's American. But she was doing an accent, too. Because, but but Terry Egerton and, and Natalie Emanuel are both have accents. So, I guess she just spoke in her British accent, because I'm pretty sure she's Brit, not Ameri she's American. I could just go look on her page maybe, you know, so we'll show. But I mean, I didn't care about that either. Wait, either British or Argentinian actors? She is British? 
Yeah, I got a sore so I that she plays a birth. Miami. So she was born in Miami, but maybe she grew up in wherever, I don't know. Maybe she grew up somewhere in the States, I don't know. But Agra, she was a great character, and I was really impressed by Donna Kimball, who sounded exactly like him, pretty much. Like, like I was constantly looking at the cast, because it's a really big cast, and it's funny that other reviews I saw would sometimes call it Game of Gelflings, like uh, Game of Thrones. But I, I kind of agree with that in the sense that there were a lot of characters to fucking to like follow after a while. I mean, that's what made it kind of Game of Thrones even me. It wasn't super dark or violent. I mean, it was a little bit darker and edgier than your average puppet kid show, but nothing too, uh, you know, extreme. But um, in terms of the voice acting that really surprised me the most, definitely Simon Pegg. Wow, wow. His interpretation of the Chamberlain, Skexel, is like bang on. Like it sounded pretty much exactly like the original. And even the whimper, his whimper was so bang on. Like I could have swore that they actually just used that same audio clip from the original film because it sounded exactly like it. So I don't know if they did, because, but I don't know if I've heard Simon Pig. I'm, I'm sure he's done voice acting before. Maybe for animated things, I don't know, but he, I was so impressed I couldn't even recognize him. I was like, who is Simon Pig? When I first watched it, I was like, he's what character? He's like, that's Chamberlain? That's Simon Pig? I was like, wow. But then Mark Hamill, who's always great, let's be honest, most of his voice acting is just kind of like another version of Joker, and in this wasn't really any difference. I mean, I could tell with Mark Hamill immediately, so they heard him talk. But then this one, I really couldn't stand. I could not stand Sketch Latch, the collector character. That was just an obvious, like, an obvious at, like, attempt at trying to bring a quote-unquote female quote unquote female character to the Skeksis because I don't know if they've ever said it but to me the Skeksis are not male or female they're just asexual or whatever they're just they just came into being they don't really like they probably don't even have sex I don't know but they introduce this really annoying character with stupid boils on her face that just leaks not for no reason she has a really obnoxious accent of like some stupid. Everyone else kind of has this Britishy like, I don't know, dignified kind of sounding voice, and then she comes along and she's like, "Oh my God, here the Calfings are gonna kill us!" Sorry, I was like, "Why does this one Skeksis have this really annoying, stupid New York voice?" It was really annoying and a horrible character, and I'm so glad they killed her off. Spoiler alert. That was my only issue. I just the whole character in general just drove me nuts. But I mean that was basically my only real gripe. Everything else looked great. The puppet effects are great. The they used digital effects, but they didn't go overboard, which is good because you could easily do that, but it was did not go overboard, which is good. They kind of went understated with it. Um, I don't know. I mean, the show was just overall really good. I'm just trying to do like an off the cuff review here. And I mean, this is what my review on my website looks like. I'll include a link to that. But I mean, it's a really marvelous show. Jim Henson probably be proud. I'm thinking that they got enough material just from the original notes of the, show, of the film that they could like make another one or more seasons. Plus there's like <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> all the different ages that they can do. Like this was a this this season was the age of resistance, so the next season could be a different age. So they're probably gonna continue off where it left because it ended with deep being like filled with the darkening so she has this new power in her, and that's probably going to make her turn bad. 
But yeah, then they really, they also had like a really good behind the scenes that played. The students last episode was over and immediately played the Crystal Call of Making Up. So that was cool because I couldn't see anywhere to choose from and it just kind of played automatically as soon as the show's over. So it's almost like it doesn't show up until after you watch the, the show. But I mean, overall, it was a great show, and I think I'd give it maybe a 4.5 out of 5. I don't know. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next season already, though. Seeing it just came out, could have to wait a while, probably a year or more, I don't know. But beyond that, I really liked it, and you should watch it if you haven't watched it already. I'm gonna go back to playing some more Zelda. You can probably hear it 